Hey everyone, this is three questions with George Ann Warnock. There we go. There we go. Love it. All right, George Ann. I actually, uh, George Ann is a superintendent. Can I? Am I saying this right? Is it Terrell? Ter 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 Terrell. You got it. Uh, yes. Oh wow. Yeah. Right. And so I actually was in um, Texas recently. I was leading a workshop, and I got there. It was a Saturday Sunday, and I saw George Ann uh on friday and i had like a little celebrity mode <laughs> i almost died i did <laughs> well listen i followed i followed georgianne on tiktok forever and she is one of the most transparent um like transparent and you just are always asking questions you're getting feedback from people and you just do such a good job I was like, I was a little thrown off. I'm not going to lie. I was really excited. <laughs> yeah, so I know, I know we've connected before, but I don't know since you became famous on TikTok. I don't know. And yeah. you're still the same person. Oh, uh, well, thanks. I, I feel yeah. the same way. It was like, oh, it. it's George. No. Oh yeah. No. I, uh, yeah. And I'm like, oh, it's a subbing superintendent. That's <laughs> <laughs> and I felt a little stupid for saying that, but yeah, I just, I, I, I love your stuff. And, um, if you follow and we're, uh, Georgiana, you're going to talk about some of the things happening in your district and. Um, just really amazing stuff that she's leading. And I know already, uh, cause she did this amazingly well. She always defers to her amazing community, which is absolutely wonderful. So make sure, and Georgianne's, uh, information is down below. So make sure you follow her cause one of the best people in education to follow. And I, I just love your stuff. So I feel such honor that you joined me here today. Thank and you. so I know, um, Georgianne is such an inspiring person, but when you think about teachers in your lifetime, and I actually threw this question at you, you're like, ah, oh, I don't no. know what to do. Because I got like a million teachers I could thank. But you're gonna have to kind of limit it. So like, this is all we got a limited time on this podcast. So if you think of a teacher, or I'll give you teachers who okay. inspired you, who's who are people you think of and why? Okay, because I could, I mean, I could start in preschool and go through and give you I mean, I my I was blessed with just a treasure trove of amazing teachers that impacted me. Um, but I, I'm going to talk about three real quick. Right. You got three. Um, Peggy Lathlane was my challenge teacher in elementary school. And she was um, super inspiring, like pushed us to totally um, think differently, challenged us, gave us a lot of autonomy as learners to create and design. And she was actually named a finalist for NASA's Teacher in Space program when I was in fourth grade. And I had her in like throughout elementary school, um, had her just one day a week that we would get to go be with Miss Lathlane. And um just the experience of watching her become a finalist for teacher in space. And we were devastated when she wasn't um, selected, you know, that honor went to Krista McAuliffe. Right. Um, but just to get like, it was so inspiring, you know, she was inspiring and like, I wanted to be an astronaut and a, you know, teacher and getting That's to, cool. uh, to have her as a, an educator. Um, and then in high school, I had two amazing, like an integrated humanities class, my junior and senior year. And my junior year was taught by Renee Simons and my senior year by Jo Beth Brizendine. And um, both of those women were just um, brilliant. They pushed us to think, like discuss, argue, um, you know, debate, challenge. But I, I knew they also loved each of us as um people like you felt special yeah yeah you know that first of all shout out, <laughs> you, know, shout out the, you know two two things that i thought of uh I, you don't know this but one of my teachers was one of the alternates for the challenger too Can you really that? yeah his name is uh vladimir murowski he was a science teacher and we were watching that because I think I can't remember if he was there, but I knew he had part of it. So like what a small world, it's a small town in Canada. So it's like one of the most vivid memories I have, you know, from my childhood. Miss uh, Lathlane was there. And I mean, I uh, was devastated when I got home. I uh, called NASA and really? they um 
connected me, the operator connected me to Cape Canaveral. I was in fourth grade. I mean, I was nine years old and um, they tracked her down at the launch at Cape Canaveral and got her on the phone to talk wow. to me. Wow. I mean, it, yeah. Yes, so, that's a crazy right? connection though. That is. And the other thing too, and I shared this at the, um, I shared this at the retreat that we were at and it was the, it, it's a meme that I, I saw. It's not mine said when we were kids, we should have like, we were taught, do not talk politics and religion with strangers. What we should have been taught is how do you talk about those things in a civil manner? And it's like yeah. amazing. Cause that's what your teachers were doing. Yeah. Right? A really, you know, important thing that we need to focus more on, um, you know, especially now, like a lot of it, there seems such contentiousness and it's like, we need more people like having conversations about this, but also recognizing humanity that, you know, like we, yeah. we have the same goal. So I love that because, um, I don't, I, I don't know if, uh, I don't know if we had that I don't know when I say contentiousness. I don't have that like civil debate in, you know, my school experience. And I, I wish there was more of it because I think there, you know, a lot of conversations. It's like, I think I, I just love that. Cause I think I'm totally ahead of their time, uh, and, and need them to come back. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. that'd be awesome. So, Great. all right. Administrator, you're an incredible administrator. Uh, I know you also know somebody who was in your house. Who's one who <laughs> actually had a chapter written about him in my book, right? Your husband, yeah. Matt, correct? Yes. Whatever. Just whatever. Just amazing. <laughs> it's like a, a retreat in your house. So, um, when you think about really incredible, um, principals, administrators, superintendents, who's someone you think of and why? Um, the very first principal who hired me um, was Dr. Sheila Mayer, and she was, I mean, is still is, I mean, has been a life, a career long mentor. I mean, she is my work mom for sure, um, but hired me as a teacher and just had incredibly high expectations, um, but also like incredibly high belief that mm -hmm. you could reach those expectations. She believed in developing us. So, I mean, as the cadre of teachers on her staff, I mean, she really sought every opportunity to grow our, um, our thinking, our, um, our expertise and our craft. I mean, she really worked to build that. And then also just, um, inspired autonomy, had us showcasing our work and ideas and, um, you know, sought opportunities for our growth and development as, as educators. She was, she was an incredible leader. And when she left um, the principalship, it was to go become the associate superintendent of all of teaching and learning. And she's a brilliant thinker about the, learning and how it works and how we should be um, inspiring learning, encouraging learning, strategies for learning. She's just just brilliant. So um, yeah, she has been a lifelong mentor to me. Give it up. Let's give it up. I love it. You know, the, the thing, one of the things you said, or actually two things you said, because there you talked about um, her really bringing out the best in you and pushing you, but then you also talked about autonomy. One of my like red flag answers, if I say like, how's your principal? Oh, they let me do whatever I want. <laughs> no, 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 she did and, not let us do whatever we wanted. There right. was very like but the, autonomy but, within the structure. Right. But, it, but there's like, it's like, Hey, like, I want you to explore, try some stuff on your own, but also I'm going to push you. Right. Like yeah. that it's that I think a lot of people, we don't give us credit that are really good in education. They will leave jobs if they feel they're not being pushed or mentored and that, and it's not that they don't have autonomy to do things, but like a really great administrator will bring out something better in you than if you didn't have one at all. And so I, I, I just love that because it's not, it's not, you either get autonomy or, you know, or someone's on your case. There's like gotta be that kind of push pull. And I, I think that's a really important aspect. I love that. All right. So one of the things I really love about your TikTok, what's going on? We're like doing this. Like, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm turning around here because. <laughs> Uh, I love it. I, there's I love some it. alert on my com other computer that keeps going off and it's singing and I'm going to turn it off. Sorry. 
This is like real live in the office. Real podcast. live. I love I'm it. Sorry. I love it. I'm so, just to... Georgia, and this is one of the things I, and this is this is honestly, Georgia. And I, one of the things I said about Georgia account is Georgia and just wherever when she does her her videos and things like that, she's not like has a. I mean, I'm sure you have like a media relations or something in communication department, but you're like, just kind of do whatever. You're just like, Hey, I'm here at this conference. I do this. And you're not like <laughs> waiting to have it scripted for you or anything like that. And so yeah. one of the things I really appreciate, um, about your TikTok account, uh, specifically is your willingness to learn and ask questions. And the, you can, you can tell like when you're asking questions, it's not like you have a predetermined answer. You're like, Hey, like tell, what do you think of this? Like, give me some thoughts and ideas. So you're to this day, and I think that's such an important thing to be as a, a superintendent. But I know if you can go back to the first years of your career, there's probably things you would change that you would do differently. So if you can go back and talk to your first year teacher self, what advice would you give? Hmm. <laughs> wow, my first year teacher self. Um. Well, this is kind of a funny story about my first year teacher self. So I got hired to start in January. So I um, uh, had done a master's program. I had a bachelor's degree, no certification. So I went mm -hmm. and did a master's in teaching and was did my student, you know, student teaching slash internship, whatever it was in the fall and then was eligible for hire in January. So what was open for me to teach at the campus where I, I did my student teaching and with that amazing principal was this class called success. And it was teaching freshmen like study habits, um, the school song, you know, yeah. uh, like, you know, kind of habits of highly effective teens kind of work. And then there was the, um, and then I taught like remediation for kids who hadn't passed their state test. So that was what I taught my first semester of teaching. And um, the the person at our campus who coordinated the success class, um, you know, there were several teachers that taught it. Um, <laughs> she didn't know that I was teaching it. And so I, you know, it's like two months in and she calls me to her room and um and she was like super leader on campus and she um it's like i did not know you were teaching this you don't have the binder you don't know what you're supposed to be doing and um i just remember like oh well the person before me left her binder the success binder so i've kind of been following it and she's like well where are you in the binder so I, you know I told her like I'm like halfway through <laughs> I'm kind of killing it in the the binder and she's like you are and I just remember being like well how long did you spend on the school song I'm like I don't know like two days I mean I just had everybody sit in a circle and we <laughs> learned it rah rah re re here we go everybody knows that they can sing it she's like that is a four-week unit I'm like oh oh my song I mean she's like everyone's supposed to like internalize and like you had to draw pictures about each like thing. I'm like, well, yeah, I, I, I didn't do that. I'm not, I'm not going back. I mean, objective, learn the school song. We accomplished the right. objective. Like let's make the, the assignment worth the time kind of, you know? So I just, that was my first semester. And I think I was probably like, oh, okay, well, let me go back. I mean, just feeling like shamed that I had not taken the requisite amount of time to adequately the school song, the school song, um, and to get really deep in what it meant, you know? Uh, so I, um, that was that, but then, you know, the next year I taught English two and world history. And, um, so I think going back to that, I would have, probably told myself to give kids more choice in what we were reading. And um, I felt a lot of like tension with, you know, like we've always taught, um, right. you know, just some boring old story and this is what we have to teach and it has to be the story. Um, and I don't, I don't know that it would have had to have been that. And I could have maybe, or I could have brought other ideas that I had at the time that, 
as I grew in my career, I felt more comfortable being like, okay, well, I'm going to do that. And we're going to do this, you know, I'm going to, we're going to learn about the archetypes with whatever, da, 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 but I'm going to also bring in like Star Wars and Harry Potter. And we're going to talk about how those connect over time. In addition to learning about Odysseus, like we're going to make connections between these things for kids. So um, I think I would have told my younger self, like you have good ideas and you can bring them into your space in the framework that is here. And, um, and you know, what's good for kids and, and, Mm. you know, don't be afraid to be creative about things that might inspire. um, Cause I know the kids were so much more excited when we would make connections to Harry Potter, Star Wars and the hero's journey versus, you know, Oh, it just following what was prescribed. Does that make sense? Absolutely. And you can tell from your work today, there's been a, a, a through line for a theme of what you do is that you're always trying to like listen and learn from the people you're serving, right? Like that's, that's what you do right now in your community. I see it all the time and, and trying to evolve there. There's a quote, I cannot remember exactly, but it's like, um, basically the idea that, um, you know, some people, like how things are and they'll never have them change but there's some people that are continuously you know trying to push the vision and it, it for us to grow as a society we are dependent upon those people and so like your willingness to challenge things to try new things um based on your own knowing how to help serve the community from what you hear from them is really really empowering so i love that you were doing that from day one but maybe you should tell that school song a little bit more, hey? Yeah, I, I failed them. I am sorry <laughs> to the These are great. 38 children that I had. Sorry. Not just, just the full school song experience. Just two days. That's it. Just, I, I'm like, yeah, why did you teach it for two? Like, yeah. I only needed one, so. Ra, ra, re, re. Let's go. You know, I let's love go. it. All right. So, hey, everyone, Georgiana, thanks so much for your time. I love, I, and this is the best thing about I, what I love about this. You can learn from Georgia, Georgia and obviously in this podcast, but follow her after because you will continuously be inspired and honestly get ideas for your schools and your classroom. So that's what I love about it. So Georgian, I, I look forward to talking to you more. Thank you everyone for listening. I hope to see you soon.